Pumpkin season is upon us and we're making a sweet bechamel and pumpkin casserole. Autumn sucks, that's the truth, but at least it's polite enough to give us some great fruits and vegetables to lift our spirits. So today we're turning these pumpkins into an amazing Egyptian autumn dessert. This casserole contains a layer of soft pumpkin pieces that's topped with a sweet vanilla bean bechamel. Apart from being insanely delicious and easy to cook, it has the added benefit of making your whole house smell fantastic. I'm certain that if you make this, it'll become your new favourite pumpkin dish. If you're new here, I'm Obi, a home cook who wants to get you cooking authentic and delicious Middle Eastern food. Every week I cover a new dish from the region, and I break it down so you can replicate it perfectly in your home kitchen. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see new Middle Eastern recipes every week. Now let's jump right in. We'll first start off by preparing our pumpkin, which we want to be tender and delicate, but still a little firm when we're done so I'll macerate it overnight to draw out excess liquid. The star of the show is the pumpkins, and they come in all shapes and sizes, but some varieties are better suited to cooking than others. These smaller ones were labelled as pie pumpkins. They have a sweet flavour and are really easy to work with because they have thinner skin. This greyish greenish behemoth is called a Jaredale pumpkin, and it has a very strong pumpkin flavour as well as an extremely smooth creamy texture. The flesh has almost no stringiness, and once cooked it has the texture of mashed potatoes. I'm going to be using this one, but the directions are basically the same whatever variety you use. And your choice of knife here is important. If you're using a larger variety of pumpkin, I really recommend using a sharp serrated bread knife with lots of teeth, rather than a chef's knife, as it can get through the woody skin of your pumpkin a lot easier. So you'll start off by splitting the pumpkin in half, as it's a lot easier to work with one half at a time. Once you get through to the other side, you'll be rewarded with the beautiful orange interior. Set aside one piece and we'll focus on the other half for now. You'll now cut this into three roughly equal segments and because we've split the pumpkin in half, it will be a lot easier to saw through the skin. When they're all cut, we can remove the core and seeds. The easiest way to do this is to make a V-shaped cut around it. Repeat the same steps until you have decored all your pieces and this is what it should look like. Now all that's left to do is to peel it and chop it into pieces. You should try to get as close to the skin as possible while still removing all visible green flesh. It should come off pretty easily in large segments. Once peeled, we can slice it into segments about 2.5cm or 1 inch thick, then slice those pieces into bite sized chunks. This is the size you're aiming for. With all the pumpkin sliced, we need to macerate it, which we'll do by letting it sit in sugar overnight. We need to weigh it first to find out how much sugar to add. My pumpkin initially weighed 2.2 kilos, or just shy of 5 pounds, and after cleaning it I was left with 1.8 kilos, or about 4 pounds of pumpkin flesh. Zero your scale and then calculate a quarter of the weight. That's how much granulated sugar you'll add to the pumpkin. For me it was 465 grams, or 1 pound, though it will be different for you. If you want to reduce the sweetness of this a bit, you can knock it down to a fifth of the overall weight. Once you've poured in all your sugar, give the pumpkin a good and thorough mix, making sure to get to the bottom of the bowl as well. You want to make sure every single piece is well coated in sugar, as it will draw out lots of liquid from the pumpkin. When you're done, it will have already started to get a little wet, and we can leave it on the worktop overnight to do its magic. The next day, this is what the pumpkin looked like. The pieces have shrunk, like really shrunk a lot and there is a load of liquid in there which wasn't there before. That liquid was all water within the pumpkin pieces, and was drawn out through the macerating process to form a pumpkin syrup. Don't throw this away, because we'll be using it to cook the pumpkin and sweeten our bechamel. To give our dessert some extra oomph, we're going to de-seed a vanilla bean. We'll use the seeds when cooking the bechamel, and the pod when cooking the pumpkin. If you haven't done this before, the seeds are basically in the middle of the pod, so you need to split it in half lengthways and scrape them out. Once you've split it in half, you'll see that they are almost hollow in the middle and filled with a black substance. Those are the vanilla seeds. To get them out, you run the tip of a knife along the inner channel and basically wiggle it to scrape the seeds out. This stuff is expensive and insanely delicious, so make sure to scrape every last bit out of there, and keep the shell of the pod as it still has a lot of flavour. If you don't have fresh vanilla, you can use a teaspoon of vanillin or vanilla essence instead. When done, you'll have a small amount of vanilla seeds that look like this. Each of those tiny particles is filled with an insane amount of flavour. To cook the pumpkin, we'll add it to a large pot with all of the liquid and sugar from the bowl. We'll also add in the cleaned out vanilla pot from earlier to get the rest of the seeds out. 
You could add half a teaspoon of vanilla essence here instead of the empty vanilla pod if you aren't using one. Place the pot on the stove on a medium high heat and bring it up to a simmer, then mix it to stir. Let it simmer for about 10 to 20 minutes. Mine was done after 10 minutes, but the exact amount will depend upon your stove and the variety of pumpkin you get. Yours is done when you achieve a fork tender consistency and you can easily cut it with the side of your fork. You shouldn't overcook it to the point of mushiness as this will still bake for a while in the oven. Once the pumpkin is cooked, we need to drain it and remove any vanilla pieces. We still want the liquid as we'll use it in the bechamel. So place a colander in a bowl and fish out your pumpkin pieces. Try to be gentle with them as you want to keep them fairly solid so they don't fall apart. Drain the rest of your pot into the colander and let it sit for at least 10 minutes so the pumpkin juices can drain off. Once your liquid has drained, you should measure out 500 milliliters or 16 and a half fluid ounces of it. To make the bechamel, we'll reuse the same pot that we boiled the pumpkin in and we'll start off by adding 10 tablespoons or 135 grams of butter over a medium heat. Once it's fully melted, we'll add 10 tablespoons or 100 grams of flour to the pot and we'll start whisking to make a roux. At first, the roux will be quite thick and pasty, but we'll continue mixing and cooking it for about two minutes until it loosens up and forms a saucy consistency. Apart from the pumpkin juices, we'll also need to measure out 400 milliliters or 13.2 fluid ounces of whole milk and 200 milliliters or 6.6 .6 fluid ounces of heavy cream. When your roux is looking really runny, we'll add about 50 milliliters or an eighth of the milk into the pot and stir vigorously to combine. Like magic, it will quickly form into a floury dough and you need to mix well until all the milk has been incorporated. When that happens, you'll go in with about a quarter of the remaining milk and work it into the dough. This time you'll add about a quarter of your pumpkin juice and you'll mix it in. Without stopping, continue to alternate the milk and pumpkin juice until a creamy and velvety bechamel like this forms. And when it does, we can add in the cream and incorporate it. Finally, you'll add in the vanilla seeds from earlier. And after one final mix, you should be left with something that looks like this. A smooth and creamy bechamel that resembles homemade custard. Once your bechamel is ready, we can assemble the final dish, for which you'll need a deep walled baking dish. We'll start off by placing our cooked and drained pumpkin into the bottom of the dish in an even layer. Fill the whole bottom layer of the dish with your pumpkin and tamp it down slightly to get it to a uniform thickness. Don't apply too much pressure when doing this as you want the pieces to remain as intact as possible. When it's filled, use the back of a serving spoon to smooth out the top layer and fill any cracks or gaps so the bechamel can't seep below. Last thing to do is to add your bechamel into the dish, and because of its consistency, it's easiest to do this using a spoon or ladle so you can get even coverage. You can also pour out the bechamel into the tray, but be careful not to pour out any of the bechamel which is stuck to the bottom of the pot and browned, as it won't look nice in the final dish. When you're done, use a spatula to flatten the bechamel layer and evenly distribute it. Then smoothen and clean up the edges. It should then go into an oven preheated to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit to bake for about 45 minutes to one hour until it has browned and achieved a deep golden color like this. If only you could smell how good my house does right now and see how mesmerizing this is in person. The top layer of bechamel has caramelized wonderfully and formed a bubbly skin that's hard to resist. Fortunately, I'm forced to, because eating this would burn a hole right through my body, as it's currently as hot as lava. Try not to think about it, and let it rest for a minimum of 30 minutes. I promise it will still be hot then. Once we've given it the legally dictated rest period, we can crack into it. And you can cut it into portions, but it just feels right to use a spoon here. If you're planning on cooking anything pumpkin related this autumn, let this be it. It'd be a great change to the usual pumpkin pie and could be easily scaled down to a COVID safe portion size. Speaking of portions, this will make about eight generous servings and only contains about 2,400 calories per piece. So it'll be a light refreshing dessert to have after a big meal. One of the great things about this dessert is that it tastes amazing served hot or cold and it even reheats well the next day. I prefer mine still warm out of the oven. So now it's time for the taste test. It's difficult to put into words how satisfying this recipe really is. Suffice it to say that if you're a pumpkin fan, you will definitely get addicted to it. 
The warm soft pumpkin has just the slightest amount of bite and it's really complemented by the smoothness and creaminess of the bechamel. Adding the vanilla seeds and pumpkin to the bechamel gives it a well-rounded flavour that frankly could be a dessert all on its own. If you're a fan of pumpkin, be sure to give this recipe a try. I'm looking for ideas for new dishes to cook, so if you have any suggestions then leave a comment down below. And if you cook any of the dishes, then please tag me in the photos on Instagram as I love to see how they turn out. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video then leave a like, comment or subscribe as it really helps the channel. As usual, all the ingredient amounts and directions are in the description box below, and I'll be back next week with another recipe.